for historical reasons, when you talk about product structure prediction, you have often talked about four different categories. By last 20 years, they are not always that easy to distinguish from each other, so they kind of overlapping sometimes. But anyway, they are good for to have as a historical resource. And they are divided in comparative modeling. Basically, homology modeling is another word for it. That basically tells you that you use a homologous template and model structure on it. And that's very useful if the thickness of that is high. So that is standard practice that is hardly even being developed in such a standard way that it's used all over. It's like blast. You see, everybody uses it. Then there was a category called fold recognition. Basically, the idea was that if you could do find templates by not using sequence, but using structural information, or use other information, so basically finding more distantly related sequence structures. And that has more and more been taken over by using sequence information instead, and because the sequence databases are so much bigger and, and the methods to use that are much better. And but anyway, it's basically you say it's hard for modeling, modeling. And particularly what you can use, you can use different combined methods there. You know, it has become quite useful. Then we talk about secondary structure predictions, so that basically step away from 3D structures, just predicting the secondary structures, if it's a helix loop or sheet, or say a certain part of the proton. That's what we'll talk about today. And it's useful in some, some senses, particularly maybe for memory protons, but it's also uh, useful as a tool for other areas. And then we have Benicio, so basically pure structure prediction from uh, uh, sequence without using templates. And that has been a major challenge for the last well, several decades. And actually, it has been quite substantial progress the last five years. So I will talk about that later. So secondary structure prediction that we're talking about today. So why should you do it? Well, ignore 3D because it's hard. Well, that's pretty cool too, but it's there was a belief for a long time that you could basically do secondary structure prediction first and then use these elements to predict and fold the proton easier. That hasn't really been shown to be true. However, it is useful that secondary structure prediction is a part of basically many, many protocols, both for homology modeling and for initial structure prediction. So it's an essential part of it. But alone, it's not that informative because it doesn't tell you so much about the form, function, or right? Or proton. So how does it, wh how do we work? How do we know it? So basically, what we're doing is we're trying to look at patterns. We're trying to look at the short regions of the proton. Say, are the patterns say that this is here is a sheet? And the reason why it works is because some amino acids have a preference for to be the helix strand loop. We already know that from the analysis of multiple, multiple sequence alignments that we have uh, uh, glycines and prolines like to be looped, for instance. But they also other amino acids that have special preferences. And there are also other patterns, as we remember also, you have this, if you have had a phobic of a second amino acid, you can have a uh, beta sheet, etc. And the, also conservation, basically, the internal part of, of the C structure is more concerned than the external part of it. And there have been at least three major generations that I will talk about, the secondary structure, for example, today. Uh, 